Hello and welcome to my video tutorial on double entry bookkeeping for assets, capital and liabilities. As the name suggests, we are going to focus on assets, capital and liabilities. The whole of financial accounting is based on a formula called the accounting equation. The equation is as follows. Assets equal to capital and liabilities. Before a transaction, assets must always equal capital plus liabilities. A transaction will have an impact in two areas of the accounting equation and after the transaction the accounting equation must still balance. In other words, assets must still be equal to capital plus liabilities. Assets are the resources used by a business. In effect, assets are what the business owns. Examples of assets would, be, would include office furniture, computers, cash and accounts receivable. Liabilities consist of monies owed by the business. This can include loans, monies owed for goods supplied, or monies owed for expenses. Capital is what the owner or the owners invest in a business, whether in the form of cash or other assets such as motor vehicles, premises, etc. In its simplest form, capital means the funds brought in to start a business by the owner are owners of a company. We're going to do a quick recap on the rules for double entry bookkeeping. Remember that the rules are covered in more detail in my earlier video tutorial called Double Entry Bookkeeping Explained in Other 10 Minutes. Details are in the description box below. Quick recap. Every business transaction has a twofold aspect. Both sides must be recorded. The double entry system has an account for every asset, every liability, and for capital. These are recorded in ledger accounts, and ledger account is like a large T, capital T, and on the debit side, you have three columns, date, details, and amount, and on the credit side, you have the same three columns, date, details, and amount. The debit side is the left hand side and the credit side is the right hand side. There will be a ledger account for each asset, liability and capital. So in other words, our ledger accounts could be called bank, our motor vehicles, our capital or whatever the case may be. When there is a transaction in one ledger account, we'll put the entry in on the debit side and in another ledger account we put it in on the credit side. Generally speaking, it is relatively straightforward to decide which of the two ledger accounts involved. The trick is deciding which account to debit and which account to credit. So, to help with that, we have some double entry rules. If we are looking at an asset account and we want to increase the asset account, we will write the transaction in on the debit side. To decrease the asset account, we will write the transaction in on the credit side. Liabilities work the other way around. So if you want to increase the liability, you write the transaction in on the credit side. And to decrease the liability, you write the transaction in on the debit side. Liabilities and capital work the same way. So to increase capital, you write the transaction on the credit side of the capital account. And to decrease capital, you write the transaction in on the debit side of the capital account. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at an example. In this example we will show the double entry bookkeeping required to record transactions involving assets, capital and liabilities. After each transaction we will also show the impact of the transaction on the accounting equation and we will show that the accounting equation still balances after each transaction. Now, just continuing with that, here's our example. Mr. Purple started a business on the 1st of January. The following is a list of the transactions for the first week. January the 1st, Mr. Purple started his business by lodging 80,000 capital into the business bank account. So the 80,000 comes from Mr. Purple, the owner, so that's capital, and it goes into the business bank account. On January the 2nd, Mr. Purple bought shop fittings for 68,000, paying by cheque. Check means the money came out of the bank. January the 4th, 
Mr. Purple took out a long-term loan of 50000 and lodged the money into the business bank account. A long-term loan would be a liability. And the money goes into the business bank account. And on January the 6th, Mr. Purple purchased a delivery van for 24000 on credit from Fantastic Motors Limited. On credit means no money changed hands. So Mr. Purple still owes Fantastic Motors the money. So Fantastic Motors are creditors, i.e. it is a liability. So what we'll now show, we will, we will enter the above transactions into Mr. Purple's ledger account for the first week of January. So Mr. Purple started his business by lodging 80,000 capital into the business bank account. So we have a bank account and we have a capital account. Money going into the bank goes in on the debit side. If you want to increase an asset, you debit it. And on the capital account, it goes in on the credit side. If you want to increase capital, you put it on the credit side. Now the impact on the accounting equation. Well, let's just have a look at that over here. So over here in the right hand side, we have it summarized. So we have total assets and total capital plus liabilities. Total assets come to 80,000, that's the 80,000 in the bank, and total of capital and liabilities comes to 80,000, that's the total for capital. So that is transaction one, or should I say the transaction for January the 1st, completed. Moving on to January the 2nd. Mr. Purple bought shop fittings for 68,000 paying by check, which means the money came out of the bank. So Mr. Purple needs a bank account, which he already has, with 80,000 in it, and a shop fittings account. Now money coming out of the bank, which means we're reducing an asset, we put that on the credit side, write it in there, and we're increasing the asset of shop fittings, so we write it in on the debit side of the shop fittings account. Now, what did their accounting equation look like? Well, what we have is assets of 80,000, except the makeup of the assets have changed slightly. The bank has dropped from 80 down to 12,000, and shop fittings, the asset of shop fittings has gone up to 68,000, total is still 80,000. Capital and liability is still made up of the capital of 80,000. Moving on to January the 4th, Mr. Purple took out a long-term loan of 50000 and lodged the money into the business bank account. So we need a long-term loan account and we need the business bank account, which we actually already have. So if you look at the business bank account, there are two transactions already on it. There's one from January the 1st and one from January the 2nd. Now, Mr. Purple is taking out a loan of 50000 The money is going to go into the bank account but it's coming from the loan account. The long-term loan account is a liability, so to increase the liability, we put the transaction on the credit side of the liability account. So we'll write that in there. And the money's going into the bank, so we'll write that in on the debit side of the bank account. Now, what does our accounting equation look like? Well, over here we've total assets, we've the bank, 62,000, so it's gone up by 50,000, it was 12, it's gone up to 50, and the shop fittings of 68,000, so the total assets come to 130,000. And on the capital and liabilities, we have the capital, which Mr. Purple put in on January the 1st, and we have the long-term loan, total 130,000. So note here, total assets equals to the total of capital and liabilities. And then Finally, January the 6th, Mr. Purple purchased a delivery van for 24000 on credit. Remember, on credit means no money changed hands from Fantastic Motors Limited. So Fantastic Motors will be creditors. In other words, will be a liability. So we need a delivery van account and we need a Fantastic Motors account. So I'll pop those in there. There's my delivery van account. There's my Fantastic Motors account. Now, a delivery van is an asset, we're increasing an asset, so we will write it in on the debit side of the asset account, January the 6th, Fantastic Motors, 24,000, and Fantastic Motors is a liability because we owe them the money. So to increase the liability, we will write it in on the credit side of the uh, Fantastic Motors account. 
And now we'll have a quick look at the accounting equation over here. Assets now equal to bank 62,000, shop fitting 68,000, and delivery van 24,000. Total 154,000. Capital and liabilities equals to, well, we've got the capital of 80, we've the long term loan of 50,000, and we have the creditors, our creditor is 21, Fantastic Motors 24,000. Total 154,000. So total assets equals to total of capital and liabilities. That's it. Thank you for listening and I hope you found the short video tutorial beneficial. Thank you.